Welcome to the complexity theory series. So here we're going to talk about all the things that are going to be within this series. So complexity theory is basically the idea of trying to look at how much computation is actually needed for solving a particular problem. So uh, the prerequisite here is that you have to know the things from the intro theory of computation stuff. So there's a playlist that's in the video description. If you uh, haven't watched that, I would suggest that you do so because you will need it to be able to understand these. So the main questions that we're going to answer here are what does efficient computation mean and uh, some uh, alternate models, at least in this first complexity theory series. There are probably going to be more than this. So the questions that we're going to ask here are uh, what does efficient computation mean? Well, in the intro series, we talked about decidable and undecidable languages. Here we are focused entirely on decidable languages, no undecidability stuff. So among the problems that we can solve, how fast can we solve them? Or how efficiently can we solve them? So the some of the factors that you may want to consider are how much time something takes or how much space something makes. So if I'm reading a bunch of uh, Twitter uh, tweets that are going right by me, I can't store all of them. So I need to maybe solve a particular problem, maybe classification, in a very small amount of space. And I don't really care about time, I really can't afford too much space. So uh, space used to be a big deal and when you're dealing with r relatively small problems, and time used to also be a, uh, a big deal. But the thing is that computers are so fast now that we start to worry less about this. Although for big data, you kind of wor you worry about both of these. But here are some of the topics that we'll be talking about. So uh, P, N, P, and X, XP here, they correspond to classes. So not like a, a class that you uh, do homework in or something. These are classes of languages. So I have a language that I want to recognize how fast can I do it and there are certain classes that will correspond to something that's being efficient or not efficient or uh, has some property that we want to satisfy. So P corresponds to, for example, uh, deterministic polynomial time and NP is non-deterministic polynomial. X, as you might expect, is exponential time. And the main question that we ask in complexity theory is, uh, how do these classes relate to each other? So uh, how does P relate to NP? How does NP relate to X? How does any one of these three relate to the space ones? How do any of these relate to any of these down here? So we try to classify sets of these languages in terms of the other ones. So like, for example, P is a subset of NP, which is a subset of X. And the only thing that we know is that P is not equal to X. We don't know whether NP is not equal to X or P is not equal to NP. There's a lot of open questions here, and we're not going to be able to solve all of them, but or really any of them. Uh, but it's just mainly trying to see what the connections are between these classes. But another one you may think about is like how much space something used. I don't care how long it takes, I just care about how much space I use. And uh, these classes down here represent logarithmic space. And then you may think, well, the input is linear. How do you work with logarithmic space? We'll, we'll see. Uh, P space corresponds to polynomial space, as you might expect. And as an example, NP is a subset of P space, which is a subset of X. Um, uh, but we don't know whether any of these are different from each other. And there's uh, a whole lot of other questions that we need to ask about here. But there are other uh, time classes and space classes that you may want to consider also. It's not just these, but these are the ones we're going to at least talk about here. Uh, but there are other alternate models of computation. So these ones are based on a Turing machine running on some input. Some other models you may want to consider are circuits. So uh, a lot of electrical engineers like to build circuits that solve a particular problem. And uh, how efficiently can we solve problems using circuits? And it's not quite 
the same model and so we can ask different questions and get slightly different answers. So P poly uh, is a class and it, may, it seems kind of weird what it means but we're going to talk about it eventually. And C and AC correspond to uh, the limiting the circuit in some way. So you can't have any arbitrary circuit but we can have certain types of circuits. Um, and, and C stands for uh, Nix class for example. And that corresponds to, well, uh, how efficiently can I parallelize something? So one example is that uh, we, you can show that NC is a subset of P. And you may ask the question, well, this class corresponds to the things that are efficiently, uh, in some sense, parallelizable. And then uh, we don't know whether P is equal to NC. So the question there is, is every problem that's efficiently solvable uh, parallelizable also and we don't know the answer to that but another model is randomization so we may not be able to solve a problem perfectly exactly but maybe we can get a very small epsilon uh, away from the true answer we may answer wrong some of the time or maybe we don't get the optimum answer but we can get pretty close and we ask well if I just allow a little bit of error how how efficiently can I solve problems within the error tolerance? And these uh, classes that we'll talk about here are trying to see um, if I allow for randomization, how much different are they from these? So if you have some error, then uh, clearly you can do at least as well as you did in the deterministic setting, but it's just how much better. Interactive proofs. So if you, this is entirely different model and uh, the main thing that we'll do here is if we have, if we want to provide secure communication or we want to have some kind of verification of whether something is true or not, an interactive proof you send between a prover and a verifier and repeatedly go back and forth. And you want to figure out, uh, the prover wants to prove the thing, but the prover may have some malicious intent and so the verifier tries to verify what the prover is saying and there's a back and forth that happens and you can talk about certain problems that are recognized in this setting. Um, and one thing that we'll show is that IP, which is the set of prob uh, uh, languages that are solvable using this interactive proof setting, uh, in some sense is equal to P space. So that's one amazing result that we we're able to prove. Um, and also for here, all of these, in fact, all of these really, uh, have complement versions, which we have some open questions about and some that uh, we don't, we can actually solve. So like, for example, NL is closed under complement. Uh, P is closed under complement. Uh, I think XP is, P space is, but we don't know whether NP is closed under complement. I think L is, I'm not sure. I have to think. Uh, but NP is not uh, is not known to be closed under complement, for example. So there are a lot of prob uh, properties that we talked about with, say, DFAs that we can apply here, and there are a lot of open questions there. Another one is oracles. So an oracle is basically, if I can immediately solve a particular problem uh, in zero time, assuming that we can, then allowing ourselves non-deterministic polynomial time in addition to be able to solve this problem uh, instantaneously, what kinds of problems can we solve then? The One of the only reasons that we consider oracles is that we want to separ show ki some kind of separation or at least some kind of evidence toward a separation. So for example, um, we don't know whether P is uh, equal to NP, but if I provide you any uh, instantaneous access to some uh, language, can I separate the two in that setting? And if you can, then that would give you some evidence that they are uh, in fact different. It doesn't give a proof, but it gives you uh, some evidence for it. So these are the problems uh, and uh, yeah, so these are just some of the problems that we're gonna consider. We're mainly talking about classes of languages and we want to see how these classes relate to each other. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave anything that you want to see covered down into the comments down below or any comments that you have about complexity theory. 
As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.